video is going to be full of spoilers, particularly for the new Avengers movie, Avengers Infinity War. So you've been given your warning. Don't cry about it if I spoil something for you. Can't say you ain't been warned. Also, before we get too far into this whole thing, if you've watched these videos before, you probably started this one and thought, hey, Mickey's got himself a pretty jamming new intro. That is thanks to my buddy and cousin, Devin Watkins, otherwise known on Instagram as Mixed by Dev, as well as his producer, Raymond Rodriguez, otherwise known as 3AM Music. You can find their Instagram page as Meow and Meow. Go ahead and check them out and give them some like love. They've really done me a really solid favor, so go ahead and show them some love. They did a lot of hard work on that intro, and I really appreciate it. So thank you, fellas. Hope to work with y'all again sometime real soon. And give me some extra background music other than this royalty free bullshit. Now that all that business is out of the way, what's up everybody? It's Mickey again. And today, we ain't gonna be cooking shit. That's right, I said we ain't gonna be cooking shit. But Mickey, you are always cooking shit. Yeah, but today I'm not cooking shit because today is gonna be my last night in this kitchen, in this apartment. Sadly, it's time to say goodbye to this place that I've called home for the past few months and since I've started this channel. But also, thank goodness, because I get to move into a new place where I can finally just have a little bit more space. Finally gonna have a little bit of a yard, which is a godsend to someone like me who grew up on sprawling amounts of land and then moved to Los Angeles, California. Getting just a little bit of a yard can cost you an arm and might make it quite literally a fucking leg. So you might be thinking, well, Mickey, if you ain't gonna be cooking shit, why are you even talking to us today? Well, today I am gonna do some drinking and show you some shit. Just happens to be not gonna be cooking this time around. Nope, today we're going to be learning how to tie a tie. Because I've noticed just too many people I know don't know how to fucking do that. And I understand, it's not the simplest thing to do if you actually want to have a nice looking tie. But it's something that everybody should know how to do. Not just the fellas, the ladies too. If you want to wear them button up shirts and wear a tie, fucking go for it. Just make sure you're doing it right so it don't look all janky. Now I'm going to put full disclaimer out there. I'm not exactly a tie tying expert. I do one knot on my ties, which I wear every day to work. Probably the least redneck thing about me. So ashamed of myself. But I wear them and I wear them well with this one simple knot. It's gonna be a half Windsor knot. At least I think that's what it is. What it seemed like from when I looked it up. But anyway, I'm just gonna show you how I tie a tie. And then we're just gonna sit down and have a drink and we're gonna, you know, talk some shit about the Avengers. Not bad shit, I love the Avengers. But you know, as great as this last movie was, there are some questions. Not even big ones that a bunch of the review sites are asking. I mean, mostly just stupid ones that you think about when you're drunk. It may be a little too high. So we're gonna delve right into that shit. Now, if you're going to be wearing a tie, there actually are a few things you're going to need. First off, you actually don't need yourself a tie. And yeah, I need one of these ties. I'm not doing that bow tie bullshit. Don't have to be too adult, though. I mean, you see I got my lovely little Darth Vader. I don't know if you can see that. My Darth Vader. Very fancy tie. Probably the fanciest tie I own. One more thing you're going to need. You need to have yourself a button-up shirt. This is not the outfit for which you will wear a tie. Nor is it a polo. That motherfucker had better have more than three buttons or else you should not be wearing a tie. So first, I got to... Get changed. Hang on. Alright, now we're set to go. So you need to make sure you get that top button buttoned all up. Don't leave that mess unbuttoned. You don't want to look like a slob. The hell's the matter with you? Alright, so as you can guess, after you've been four beers in, it's going to get really difficult trying to describe how you're going to actually do this whole thing. But I'm going to do it as best I can. I'll try and follow along with you with some of the captions and stuff that I put on there, some of the graphics. Not really sure how well that's going to turn out though. First thing you want to do after you get, when you start to get everything set, is kind of even everything out for length. This will take a little bit of time, a few times of you doing it, to really figure out where your tie needs to sit before you start tying it. Key thing being, you don't want to have it going too short. You don't want your fat end sitting all the way up here, and your long, your thin end sitting all the way down here. It's all janky. Usually, I feel like if you go just below your nipple, you'll be good to go. At least I've got a different height differential than all you guys. Like, you just got to figure it out on your own. All right, so then you're gonna turn that sucker in right here. Get yourself a nice firm grip on that X right there. Then go ahead and pull your fat end through. Then go ahead and wrap that around the back. Then go flip it back up and do another loop on the other side, just like that. So you should have it even on both sides. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna flip the whole thing around your front. Be sure to put your two fingers in here and make sure you have a little bit of a gap in there. That way you can push it back through to form the knot. While you're holding your tie there, push it back around and under. Once you've got it up through here, loop it back down around into where you've been holding your fingers. That'll form the actual knot and pull it all the way through. Depending on how you want the shape of your tie to be, you're gonna use your fat end to really start adjusting that. So if you want it to be a little bit tighter, maybe a little bit narrower, you can adjust that as you go. Then, as soon as you got it shaped how you want it, take your skinny end and just pull that sucker up. Right up nice and tight there against that top button. Just get it nice and snug up in there so it's not cutting anything off, but it looks nice. There you go. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this shit because it's hot as hell out here in Los Angeles, California today. Ah, I feel much better. So now that we done got past all the business stuff, let's get down to the fun stuff. 
Now we need more beer. Crisis averted. Hallelujah. All right, so now let's get down to these questions about Infinity War. I myself am a big comic book fan. I grew up reading the X-Men comics and Daredevil, as well as the Punisher, who is also my favorite Marvel character of all time. And I like looking at a flawed character when you're looking into him and you just know he's not a hero. But we're not talking about Frank Castle today. We're talking about the Avengers. So here's my biggest question about Infinity War. One of my biggest. I got quite a few. Start us off, why did they put Bruce Banner in the Hulkbuster armor? Number one, Bruce has no idea how to use that armor. It's Iron Man's armor, like he's the one who built it for himself to use it. He didn't make it so that anybody else could face off against the Hulk. He himself, Tony Stark, was going to be in that armor, so he never would have shown Bruce how to use it. Secondly, Bruce is a scientist, he's not a fighter whatsoever. So even if you throw him in that big ass armor that he has no idea how to use, he still doesn't know how to fight with his own body, and now you're putting him in a body that is essentially the size of his alter ego that he also doesn't know how to control. And you're just hoping for the best, all because he can't figure out how to bring the Hulk out. Which is downright fucking stupid when you think about it. We know that the Hulk won't let Bruce Banner die. We know this all the way back to the original Avengers movie. That was when Bruce Banner recalled the story of when he tried to kill himself by shooting himself in the head. And then boom, out came the Hulk and he spat the bullet right back out. You don't even have to go back that far. You can go right back to the last Thor movie, Ragnarok. Bruce literally jumped out of a plane and landed on the Bifrost Bridge face first. And sure enough, 10 seconds later, boom, there's the Hulk grabbing this big ass wolf by the tail and throwing him into the fucking ocean. You don't even have to look back that far to realize if you just let Bruce get the shit kicked out of him, boom! It's the Hulk! But while we're criticizing the moves of the Avengers, at least Bruce had the balls to get up in there when Thanos decided to show his ugly mug. You know who was there who didn't decide to do anything? Rocket! We know Rocket was there because Rocket was there when Groot started to fade away after the finger snap. So why didn't Rocket do anything about it? Where was he in this whole Avengers face-off against Thanos montage? Everybody else got up in there, Groot even got up in there. Sure, he got his ass whooped real quick and Thanos just threw off his shit. But still, he gave it a fucking go. Now sure, you might be able to say, well, Rocket's really small. He was only armed with a gun. Compared to Thanos, most of these motherfuckers are small. And then look at Bucky. He went in there with just a gun, quite literally, because they gave him that new Wakanda-style robot arm and then he just didn't seem to use it at fucking all. Back to my point. What the fuck, Rocket? You were just sitting there early in the movie talking to Thor saying if Thanos won, you had a lot to lose. And you did. You lost your whole fucking team. Way to go, Rocket. Way to sit this one out and cause your own fucking problems. Anyway, that's all my griping for now. Hope you enjoyed this video about me doing a probably shitty job at tying a tie. And then me ranting on about my few issues, my very few issues that I actually have with the Avengers movie. I know it sounds like I got into it, but I really do love that fucking movie. It's so great. But with that being said, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down there. Just smash that like button. If you're new here and you want to keep following these videos, you want to see new tasks that I'm going to do, maybe new recipes that I bring up, whatever's really going on that week, go ahead and mash that subscribe button right down there. And then as always, if you've got an opinion on what I've said or you want to fire back at me, go ahead and drop something down in that comment section down below. And if you really want to show this old redneck some love, go ahead and just share this video across any bit of social media that you've got going on. Anyway, with that being said, I've been Nikki. This has been a Drunk Redneck Explains. Later!